reason why I'm so excited is that this item, you're witnessing history now. This item right here is my first freebie. And it's from the nice people at Reef Glass. So the next Sunday reef tanks around the world, I'm giving the reef glass away. Let's take a quick look at it. Here it is. It's 30 and under gallons, guys. Comes with a little knobby thing on the top. This is your holder. You can put this in the back compartment of any of your nano tanks. It fits right in there. Look how narrow it is. It's perfect. All right, this goes down. The only thing you need to get for it, it's got hose. All you would need to get for it is a air pump and a little collection bottle for the schemate that flows over. And that can be used, anything can be used for that. So there it is, reef glass. That's why it's important to say where you're from and address, all right? New viewers, today it's Water Change Wednesday. What Water Change Wednesday is, you ask me a question below the video in the comments section, I answer it there and I'll answer it here. And I'm also gonna show you some maintenance things I've been doing. I like to keep you guys updated on what's going on with my tank. So in between the questions, I'm just gonna show you a little bit about what I got going, all right? All right, let's get right into it. Water Change Wednesday. That tank last week, guys, I have to say to start the video off, it's Art Man at Artherium. I think that's how you say it. I'll put it down here on Instagram. If you want to see more images and some video, at Artherium. He's a really nice guy too. He'll answer your questions. What a tank last week. So check him out on Instagram. So, I think it's gonna go away. Yeah, they're pulling forward. Hopefully it won't happen again. All right, so first question. Fabrizio asked what my settings are on the AI Prime Soul. And a lot of you guys may be using that, new viewers, if you're just starting and you're looking for a light, the AI Prime Soul is a really decent light for over a 10 gallon and under. If you go to 20, you might need two at that point because the tank starts to get wider. But I have my settings. Forty percent royal blue, thirty-five percent blue, and sixty percent cool white. That gives me the feel and the look and the par I want. Up on the top for the fire digitata. That's about 350 par, and then down toward the bottom drops down to about 180, and then out to the sides, because it's over the center, it drops down even lower. So that's my settings on the AI Prime Soul. Thanks, Fabrizio. All right, guys, you've seen me up here before. What I wanted to show you is just some basic maintenance. I'm noticing a lot of hair algae growing on the back wall of the Pico. And I just want to remove it and keep it clean. This is all I'm doing. I'm just showing you what I do here. New viewers, this is kind of the way my video goes. I'm going to show you this blade also. So what I do is I just go in and scrape it off. I just come down inside and go straight up. I don't go up and down because I'm trying to remove as much hair as I can. The other thing is, is I keep my return pump on, that way anything that floats around that doesn't come out, it'll get collected in the sponge in my overflow box. Here's another question about this scraper. Believe it or not, it's such a simple thing. It's something we use every day. JK asked about, is this an old school, whoops, is this an old school razor blade? And no, it's really not. This razor blade is supposed to be stainless. They always say they are but they're really bad stainless. So see, it has two holes in it, and this little screw, which is stainless, screws into it, 
but there's no way around it, JK. You have to replace this. I would do it every month. There's a little rust on the top, but none on the bottom, and I flip it over. Those of you who are concerned about a tiny bit of this getting into the tank, don't worry about it. I've been using rusty scrapers forever. It's not gonna affect your tank. Look how rusty this part gets. All right, that's that. The scrape. Put the scraper back together. As you can see how easy this is. You know, it's so easy to line the hole up and you just screw it in. Now that it's taken me like 10 minutes to, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, you know what? There it goes, just go ahead. There we go, there we go. It's not as hard as I just made it, guys. They usually go right in. Oh, great. All right, I'm falling apart here. Stand right, next in. question, Par Cool asks, he says his GSP is not growing, green star polyp. Can you please tell me how to make the green star polyp grow faster? Green star polyps can be tricky or they can be easy as can be. They do like a higher DKH and calcium and they also like a lot of light. keeps mine in check in certain areas is it's in the shade. If it's not getting a lot of light, it's not going to open up and grow fast. So I would say light, calcium, and a good DKH. A couple people asked me about F1. I am a big F1 fan now. When they saw that little cutaway. I got into it last year. I watched a documentary, I forget the name of it, but it had all the drivers and the whole thing. I didn't realize how cool George it is. George Mattoon asked a question about a 25 gallon lagoon. And if he runs an MP10 on that, we had some back and forth on that. An MP10 can be an extremely strong Wave maker. I have one in the 20 gallon, but I have it set between three and four, depending on what I see the tank doing. It's three out of 10 or four out of 10. If I put that up to 10 in my 20 gallon, it would almost push the water over the side. But it does have the ability to go way down. So I told him on a 25 gallon lagoon, it's probably longer, it's probably 20, you know, some odd inches long. If he puts it on one end, keeps it low, and then he positions his corals in the appropriate spot. And he said he has mostly softies. So what I would say is don't put them right in front of it. Angle it, maybe you put it towards the back of the aquarium like I did, then the water will go along the back and it'll circulate around the front. So by the time it gets to the front, it's not real strong. And obviously, you're not gonna put any corals up against the back of the aquarium unless it's a peninsula. Then you run into a risk of too much flow across the back. That's what I would do, George. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the five gallon. In the back, there's some hair algae growing up the back wall, and I'm gonna clean that off. All right, so I've already done a little bit because I forgot to turn the camera on. So here we go. I'm just going up so I can reach in the back. I've moved this rock structure forward. This is one big piece here. See it? I can lift it up. That's all one piece that I connected from many little pieces. So you can check that out. I believe it was five gallon something. Check some of my beginnings videos from about a year ago and you'll see it how I put it together all right guys so that's how you get rid of hair algae off the back of your tank and that should not grow back in my estimation because of the low nutrients it's not going to grow back we'll check in on that from time to time to see if it is 
<laughs> Mr. Tony said, Aspania. Below all my videos now, guys, new viewers, below the video, I have the requirements for reef tanks around the world. Sometimes I just talk way too much. So have a great rest of the night, and I'll see you on Sunday. Take care now, guys. Thank you.